Hi, everybody. I'm Jordan Ostroff with Legalese Marketing, and this is Exhibit A Attorneys, where we interview attorneys and other experts across the country to take what it to learn what it truly takes to be the Exhibit A of a successful attorney. This week's, ep- or I guess this week's, today's episode stars BJ Bernstein, who is actually going to be the first person to really talk to us about being a great attorney. I think everybody else has talked about running a great firm, a great business, and their marketing efforts, but here, we have an expert who's going to talk to us about Zoom advocacy. So for those of you that don't know BJ, uh, BJ has been practicing for 33 years in Georgia, handling, handling criminal defense and civil litigation in both state and federal court, a podcast host of Law Talk with BJ. He also has provided legal commentary over the years with appearances on CNN, MSNBC, Fox News, NBC Today, Today Show, CBS, ABC, Good Morning America, and many other programs. It's won uh, national awards for legal work, including the John J. College of Criminal Justice Award, which was presented by the late Congressman John Lewis, the Distinguished Service Scroll Award from the University of Georgia School of Law, the highest award for an alum of the law school, and the SCLA Women Drum Major for Justice Award. That one she received along with actor Forrest Whitaker. So quite the evening. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Cause um, and, and perfect that we're talking about Zoom on uh, on a different platform, but it's the same thing that we're online and having to connect online, which you do with your your show. But Very I true. Make sure that goes through to helping you help your client. Yes, absolutely. So we're going to get into Zoom advocacy and the best tips for that during, uh, you know, the COVID-19 pandemic and court being remote. For those of you that enjoy the show, our last episode starred Jay Harrington. Jay talked to us about thought leadership and some tips for LinkedIn. So we'll put the link there if after this show is over, you want to go ahead and watch that one. And with that being said, so when we're talking about Zoom advocacy here, BJ, tell us a little bit more about what we're going to get into today. We're going to talk about your setting and how to come across to the judge in such a way that the judge is paying attention and you're not angering the judge. Um, You know, we're used to going to court and being able to see everybody and there and and that there's a certain decorum because of the courtroom. You know, you're all dressed as a lawyer. You're in the setting of a lawyer. Now you're in lawyers homes. And yet the judge is focused on this is still court. And some of the casualness that we do with our friendship Zooms or other things that we do with Zoom, we're forgetting we're in court. And um, what specifically inspired this or part of it was I was uh, on a panel judging a moot court contest um, nationally with a federal judge in Texas. And we ended up waiting, everything was delayed and we ended up talking and he gave me these incredible pointers of all the things that piss him off with judges do, I mean, lawyers do during a hearing. And, you know, remember you're getting paid to represent the client and, and angering the judge because of your zoom advocacy, ah, advocacy skills or your space. Um, Not a good way to start. Yeah, that's really interesting because on, uh, I guess it was yesterday, uh, we, I was judging the undergrad mock trial tournament. And so same thing. So they're zooming in across the whole country. I don't know what, where the tournament in theory was hosted that I was in, but everybody else is logging in. And so I did make a comment on almost everybody about, you know, their background being positive or negative or their sound or whatnot. So it makes me, uh, it makes me extra aggravated that I was scrambling to find the right headphones before this, but it is what it is. Exactly. And, and courts, you know, just like in regular court, you lose your place, you can't find a document, you need a few minutes. Um, those kind of things are going to happen. But there is, I think, a lot of times missing professionalism because we are in the comfort of our own residence and forgetting it is court. So rule number one, don't have your cat filter on. I think that's, uh, that's a fair and timely <laughs> right. reminder. That, 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 was, that was a very timely. Don't have your cat filter on. 
Um, <laughs> that, that was one of the funniest things of the year. There's no doubt about it. Well, and the, the beauty of it is, so the attorney handled it well, like couldn't figure out the tech, but was like, I'm ready to go forward. The judge handled it with such poise and, and in stride. And then you have all the other attorneys on there that are like not paying attention. And then something like, wait a minute, there's a, there's a cat on the screen. And then they start <laughs> laughing. Like it was just, it, because like, I could have seen that play out so poorly of just somebody being like, you think this isn't serious. You know, you guys are messing around, blah, blah, blah. But I just, it was the right, it was the right mix of people with a great attitude who just handled it in stride. Exactly. Exactly. But, you know, as we know, there's all different types of judicial temperament out there. And the ideal is not to come to court as a cat. Right. <laughs> Certainly. So when it comes to Zoom advocacy, you know, doing the best for our clients, what should, what should we be thinking about prior to the hearing from the lawyer perspective? Well, actually, I would say besides preparing yourself, preparing your client. You know, because that's the other part is um, I've just I've done a number of hearings where I am not present and not sitting next to my client and they're just um, in a prison or in a different location or we've done depositions. And so not in the prison set setting, but you want to make sure you get on with your client on Zoom well beforehand so you can see what their room looks like. You can see what their lighting looks like. All the things that you would do for yourself, you're wanting to do for them if they are going to be on the screen. And give them tips, work with them. Um, if you need to send them equipment, you know, I've been involved in depositions where equipment is sent, and we always send the computer, but maybe we need to send a microphone. Maybe we need to send, send a light for them. Um, whatever it is they need, um, because it is their case. Um, so you want to add that to your list of things in, in terms of that type of preparation. So obviously, I mean, you know, if your client's incarcerated, that's going to change this analysis. But what's your advice about having the client come to your office or not? Well, I mean, again, it depends on what's going on with COVID. I think more than anything else, I know the times that I've dealt with it, um, we've all decided that that's just not going to work. Um and it's beyond people's comfort zone. I mean, things are changing as this has gone on for a long time. Um, but for the most part, I've been doing them remote, even with a client, but preparing in advance. I would imagine a lot of clients are, for the most part, going to use their cell phone. Is that correct? That's correct. They're using their cell phone a lot. And so the only hard part about that is you, a lot of times, if you can get them on a computer, and, and I will say this, I'll take that back some. Some law firms are just sending the computer because they're that concerned about the technology. Oh, okay. I, I had a client that we didn't want to use the phone and we wanted to make sure, you know, because the other thing is then I can't just call them and interrupt and stop everything and get off the, get off the hearing or whatever, or text them a message, um, which takes the place of having your legal pad and you're writing a note to your client, like stop doing that. Stop clicking your, your teeth. Yeah. Shut up. Just exactly. hold on. So, so you having your, their phone free is kind of your little way of being able to reach them while something's going on. Makes sense. Yeah. You know, it's, it's interesting because the, as the technology gets more advanced, you know, you've got like the, the tournament I did over this weekend, everybody logged into the same Zoom and then they had the breakout rooms for the different trials. And then with um, show only speaker, you would have like the witness and the attorney would pop in and then they would pop out and depending on the video, just crazy to see. But ultimately, you're right. You do need that like direct line of communication that's unmonitored between you and the client because sometimes you really do need it. Exactly, exactly. And you need right. to make sure that everybody knows how to use the mute button. The mute button is probably, my mute button skills are mad these days. I mean, you are, because if I'm not speaking because I have dogs, which we may get, we may meet them briefly during this, they're being walked right now. But, you know, you want to be able to cut down the excess noise and you have a very good, you know, I always keep my finger ready to go where I can mute, unmute, mute, unmute. Um, and solve some of those problems in advance. And if you can work with your client to do that as well, that is helpful. 
which a uh, brings me back to my state attorney days or my wife's PD days, where you had the little button in the uh, with the microphone for what wouldn't get carried over the speakers in the courtroom. Correct. It's good, uh, it's they, good practice. It's good practice, and you really sh- you know, that's the thing with all these things. Practice. Take a look. Do a dry run. Um, even if it's a short hearing, it doesn't hurt. Yeah, I mean, I would imagine there's got to be clients out there that just have never used Zoom or WebEx or, you know, whatever specific system that your courthouse is using. Um, and hopefully you have the ability to get in early or set up a, a mock run or something like that for them, just, just from the technology perspective. Right. The mock, mock run is the ideal because you, you start to figure out that you have internet issues already or their Wi-Fi is not strong enough and and then you can at least call the other council on the other side and have these discussions or pick a different location. So all right so we we've gone it over with a client we make sure they have the right technology we as the attorney I mean what do we what do we need to do then on our end before the hearing starts as well? Well you want to be all the things that anger a judge in court you want to have thought about there in other words timeliness being late on zoom court angers a judge um i think the direct quote from my federal judge i'm taking a look at some of his quotes quote there's nothing that pisses me off more than a lawyer who gets to a zoom hearing late you wouldn't do it in a courtroom why do you think you can do it at zoom um you, you know all so all the things all that decorum i think you you never go wrong being casual, you know, not being formal in a courtroom with a judge. And so the same thing goes with, with this. It, it just, it really makes a difference. Um, so not being late, you understanding how to use your um, functions, making sure your lighting's good and making sure you can be heard. And, you know, everybody, you, you're wearing your microphone. I have uh, one of these blue snowball ones. And it's also not a money thing. You don't have to invest in a lot. This one I actually got because uh, a neighborhood yard sale um, tech guy was moving 10 bucks for something that costs 70 or 80. So I was like, yay, great. It works. It makes a difference. Um, lighting, same thing here. I'll show you my little. $30 uh, from one of the big box tech stores and having that lighting. And you can see if I take that lighting away, you're not seeing my face as well versus if I just knocked it over. Um, and the reason why it's not vanity to see your face, but again, more than ever in the courtroom, a judge is looking at your face. You know, when you're in court and how you express yourself and whether you seem sincere in what you're saying, does it really matter? Is it really, is your emotional level the way it should be is told not just from what you're, what they hear, but what they see on your face. And the nice thing about this is I think as lawyers get used to doing it um, in a hearing, you do kind of forget that it's zoom court and you get into your argument and you want to show that same passion that you are right. And that the court needs to rule in your in your the way you're asking yeah and um for the for the more cattle call hearings uh regina edwards had uh, she had it or she or it was on her uh lawyer on the beach facebook group they basically put a, a like a note behind them of what case they were here on for the trial management or whatever it was and i thought that was such a smart thing because i imagine the judge sitting there with you know everybody's screens and then you have like oh i'm here for client you know, yada, 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 to be like, all right, we're calling that one next. Cause I know exactly, you know, I don't have to worry about going through the docket and get somebody in. Right. So that was a good idea. And that's the other thing. I mean, it sounds silly, but a lot of people are not having their full names as they would use it in court on the zoom. Um, it'll just say like BJ or BJ's iPhone or whatever, you know, it really should be BJ Bernstein, um, John, you know, Witherspoon, whoever it is, the, cause the judges are relying on that as well. Um, they're having that same issue is that they're not in the courtroom where they're seeing you and go, oh, I know that lawyer or you introduced yourself. I got to remember it. And so having that name actually show up um, is very helpful to the court. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. And then I know um, for some of them, I guess if you're calling in, it's just going to show up the last, I think the last four of the phone number. 
but I assume that's obviously not going to be something that's happening at a substantive hearing. Right, right. You, you just, you, the more you can make it easy on the judge, just like regular court. You know, when you're, or when you go to regular court, you have your documents ready. Oh, your honor, you don't have to flip through the pages. I will hear for you is this, this, and this that we're going to be talking about, or here's the contract we're talking about. And the same thing goes for the Zoom, you know, preparation is, do you need to make something so that the judge can actually see what part of the contract you're talking about or actually see the crime scene? So you, 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 you're you going to prepare um, a little bit more than you would even for the regular courtroom just because of the technology part. So in terms of um, background, I mean, do you have a position on the virtual background or not, or what to have so, on the background? A couple, couple things about backgrounds. I'm obs- Part of how I got into this, too, is I watch one Room Raider on Twitter. If anybody watches, um, is a Twitter person, is obsessed with the news, and because of all those years on television, I am obsessed with tele- uh, TV news and anchors, and they rate the rooms, this website. And if you go to, it's really, it's on Twitter, if you're unsure about how your your place looks, start looking at what this guy, because he rates them one out of 10, and what looks good and what doesn't look good. Now, you're not going to do all those things exactly because you wanted to look at courtroom, but you want to have the common idea to keep it, which is you're seeing my face. I have the light. If you look behind me now, it's a pleasant scene, but it's not taking away from me. So, and because it's court, you'll see behind me, there's a giant, um, a friend of mine was a photographer and had done this great um, photograph of an old, old Georgia law book. So that's what's behind me. It, it says law. But at the same time, I have balance of a little something behind me. So you see I have beautiful flowers behind me, which actually perfectly I received those this weekend before this, so I didn't have to buy any. But normally I always keep just a little touch of fresh flowers or something over there for color that's live. And then I have a little piece of art that um, that's my own painting. So that's a little bit there, a painting that I did. Um, But it's not in your face and it's not distracting from the fact that I'm talking to you. I'm focusing on you, but you get just a tiny bit of idea about me. Um, Now, when I do other types of Zooms um, or I sometimes do them downstairs and um, it has a different look um, because it doesn't need to be as formal as I feel like it should be here. To me, where I'm sitting here should say law. And if you're doing it in your bedroom or you're doing it with things that the judge just, it doesn't go over well with the judge. It takes that formality away and they are desperate to keep the formality and that is your audience. So you want to have, you can have your house, but it needs to be tamed down um, such that it has a professional look and it's a respect thing for the court. Unless you really know the judge very well and then you could put their favorite college football team or something uh, up behind you, right? I I don't know about that. Just Just, just kidding. As a uh, there you go. as a as a gator who's married to a half gator, half bulldog, that's just our, our running joke. So there you go. I guess I could put a Georgia law dog back there somewhere, but yeah. So all right, anything else we need to talk about before we get like to the actual hearing? I guess metaphorically to the actual hearing. Um, just make sure you know the lighting, the back. Oh, let me one more thing about the virtual background. Yeah, of course. So this I've been noticing a lot. A lot of people are using those, and it makes sense because you don't have the perfect space. You don't have room to you know keep all the lights and everything. But there's one strange part about it, which is when you see the virtual background, there is that weird as you turn and move, the lighting around you gets weird, and it is very distracting for a judge and this judge had problems with it virtual backgrounds preferred a real background because of the distraction um i was on a hearing the other day and it was i i could see exactly um the other side it was just really weird because every time this lawyer moved there was like this halo shaped glow thing going on so um 
I'm not a big fan of the virtual backgrounds unless there's just nothing else you can do and you need to really do it for a client because there's no way to help them with their space look decent. I mean, and I think like worse comes to worse if you take like if you take a piece of art off the wall and just stand closer to the wall and just have like a single color background, I would think that's going to be not bad. I mean, unless it's like a crazy color, but yeah. And I mean, like I'll switch things. I mean, granted, I have like the rolling desk that I work from. So depending on what's going on or if it's too sunny, you know, do I have the window in front of me open? Do I have it closed? the light changes as the day goes on, which why you need the extra light. Because again, it's not because you're having the perfect setting and you're trying to set a movie scene, but you are wanting the judge to see your client. And if it's for several hours that they're testifying or, or sitting with you, if you're actually together, impressions are made just like they are in court. So that's why it sounds like it's picky, but it's not because you, you are an advocate and you are trying to, to convince the judge or your virtual jury, so to speak, to, to listen and agree with you. Well, it's like to, to use a sports analogy, I think your, your setup is a lot like an offensive lineman. You know, if they do their job right, you never hear about them. You know, if, if the background is nice, that's not going to, that's not going to be a problem. It's when it's really something awful or unprofessional, that's when it's going to start being an issue. Precisely. You got it. All right, so we've got our client prepped, we've got our area prepped, we've got our, our light, our mic, et cetera. What else, you know, we're at the beginning of this hearing, what do we have to think about now? Well, one thing I do want to mention that kind of goes along with the hearing going along is that a lot of, you know, there's a chat function on a lot of these Zooms. And the problem with the chat function is you, you don't know what the, a lot of the judges it is set up where they can see all the chat. So if you're trying to have a chat um, on the actual platform the, uh, and it's saying something about what the judge is saying, the judge may see it. Um, I got that from the federal judge. Uh, he was able to see things and it really, you know, again, they're all <laughs> the omnipotent um, Oz sitting there seeing those things on the side or that you accidentally using that chat function, see something or say, you know, you send it to the wrong lawyer um, or whoever's your witness. So I, my advice is the chat function while you're in a hearing, not good. And also the judge gets on earlier than you realize and listens, you know, this particular judge um, indicated that he had heard lawyers talking before the hearing, not realizing he was there. And just like, you know, in a courtroom, you have the ability to immediately see to turn it off. But with this, you're not. So just danger with the chat function and just, again, come up with a different way to communicate with your client if you need to. Well, that's the old, uh, what is it, dance like nobody's watching, send emails like they'll be read in front of Congress. So that's send right. send Zoom chats and have Zoom conversations as if everybody can hear and you. I can hear you. Exactly. Makes perfect sense. So, and, uh, oh, yes, yep. No, I just, I want to make sure that we touch on like literally presenting evidence, the screen share, the, cause like this is the one that I think people have the biggest problem with, myself included. I do too. I still struggle. <laughs> and, and then like you, you know, you put it up on the screen and then based upon what their window is like, it's going to be, you know, this big or they can do the full screen and make it this large. And then it's like, do you, you know, how much do you zoom in? You know, how, what, what's, what and, advice and, do you have on this? So I would say this, I think lawyers overuse those things in regular court. Okay. Okay. Um, Thinking that having all, you know, every single sheet of paper in front of the jury in that way, and the jurors just kind of glaze out. So think about, do you really need that document or is it going to come through through listening carefully to the witness and you making your argument like you would in court with just bullet points that are clean by you at the end or at the beginning to introduce, but not doing it throughout the whole hearing. Now, if it is a document that you truly need them to identify that they signed it, or it's it's the part of your case that you really need, or you're during your hearing, you can do it. But an overload of 
using those on screen versus you know, if you've sent it to all the parties and the judge has it, you could even send up a little notebook to everybody and say, judge, you know, on page 22, if you want to look down, I sent to you this and you'd send it to the other council and they can look at it that way. And not just because that screen view is distracting. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, that makes perfect sense. And I love, I love the idea of being able to send it beforehand. I mean, it's similar to what you do in normal court for a lot of these hearings. Right. To make sure and, that it was you know, accessible. Because like the court reporter already, you know, any good court reporter already wants you to have the stickers on, not with the number, <laughs> but, you know, they want the stickers or they want everything identified or other courts, you know, and, and criminal is a little different than civil. But, you know, civil, you've had all these depositions. You have all these documents. Um, do you really need them on the screen with this time that you have because the other thing is you know some things are are all day but truthfully i think they are shorter hearings than you normally have in open court um so you want to focus the way you need to without getting caught up in in those you want to make a good record um and you can do so without it being on screen per se so in a situation though where you've got something that has to be on screen, you know, it's it's an accident and you want to have some pictures of the scene up there, you know, something along those lines. What what can we do? Like what we've tried to do is have somebody else watching, you know, from their perspective who's got the, you know, direct line to us, hey, it's too small, you can't see it. It it came to the wrong, you know, you shared the wrong screen, whatever those issues that come up. What are some other tips and tricks though? You know, again, I think backup is ready to be able to just hold it up yourself and use the, just use the camera. I mean, because you have all the technology thing and that, that's all there. But if worse comes to worse, if I need to, you can't tell this, but you have something that you can literally hold up and use just like in the good old days before we were, you know, there was a time where we had big giant poster boards in court and they worked. <laughs> Um, Very true. Everything. So having those kind of things or key terms or that, just being able to do it straight up, it's, it's just your backup. Makes total sense. So the other thing that I struggle, well, I guess I shouldn't say I struggle with anymore. I've broken myself of this, but like, you know, you stand up to speak in court, right? Like that is so hardwired into so many of us. Ah, exactly. So what do you what do you do for Zoom? Like, do you do you ask the judge to stand up? Do you do you take the rolling desk with you as you you know walk around the room? Like, what's how, uh, how do no, we get I, over I've that? I've had to learn how to speak um, sitting down, and and do that sitting down. I mean, because re realistically, getting I mean, I have everything about the getting up thing. You do everybody. Obviously, I look very nice from hair up, but then a lot of lawyers are in shorts. Um, even for hearings and they forget, oh my God, you asked me something, your honor, just one moment. I had that document back here mm -hmm. and, start walking. and if I'm in shorts, um, that's not good. So you're going to dress for zoom so that if I'm walking all the way back, um, I've got on black pants. I mean, I, am I, am I as looking as good as I do or have my pan fancy shoes on like I do when I go to court? No. But you need to be prepared for the fact that you may need to stand up and not be in shorts or whatever it is. Um, and so that that comes into view. So that's that's one part of it. Um, what was the other? Where, I lost where we were. I got a, I, I got so, moving around. Oh, about standing up versus sitting down. Right. Um, I, you just got to work on it. I, I, you've got to learn how to argue without um, standing up unless you want to do your entire thing. I actually have, so my setup is, and it, this was pre pandemic um, because I had, I work from home a great deal and um, the office that I had in Atlanta, the law firm, I shared space imploded during all this. So it kind of even worked out that everything is, is near me, but I have several, all my desks are on rollers so that I can set it up differently. And I actually do have a stand-up desk. Okay. So if I really want to stand up, I can put my computer there and then I'm at eye level with you and I have that comfort st standing up. So CB2, I'm not getting any uh, money from them. It's Crate and Barrel's um, lower, lower level. Um, and they have these, you know, rolling desks 
that are great and one stand up and the others are short. Um, and then the same thing with your uh, filing cabinets. Everything's movable, which is also great for, the, for, for what's happened now. Right. Because if the light's wrong or if I need to go downstairs and do someplace different, I can, I can move it down there. Everything's rollable and movable. So in terms of getting that comfort level, though, like I just for me, it was doing these presentations Correct. like it was doing these chats here and just sitting in front of that camera for, you know, hours every day, every week, every month. And finally, at some point, it just like clicked and it was normal to talk sitting down. I mean, is that is that, that what it takes? It, it, that's what it takes, you know, and okay. practicing with other people. And I mean, being, being honest, when you're watching, when you're on zoom with other lawyers, I mean, this, what started this whole thing with me is early on, I was, um, I had a murder client. We were having a bond hearing remote. And one of the lawyers, he was sitting at his desk, the way he had the angle and you could see like his whole room. And he was like a messy lawyer. There were uh, books everywhere. There were piles everywhere. And I had thought of him as a really great lawyer. When I saw his office, I was like, what the hell is this? I mean, it was that bad. So even, so even if you're a messy person, this is why I keep emphasizing the ability to move things around. Because, you know what, maybe you do like to, maybe you're that kind of lawyer. You love books all over you and it's a mess. But when, it's not that way when you're in the courtroom. So you have to be able to adapt to it um, and it does make an impression on people. And so you just got to get, you, you got to get used to it um, and connect because when you connect um, the, you will stand out. If you think about the hearings, if you attend them online and I can, the judge is almost smiling when I'm there because I have thought of everything and made it simple for them and it looks professional. And it sounds professional, and that's what that that's what they're craving. Um, yeah, I mean, and honestly, I think that's something to keep in mind, even during normal court. Like you always, you know, you see some of these big long trials, and then one side has all their stuff nicely lined up. They have all the exhibits there. The other side has like the bankers' boxes of depots everywhere, and it just like it's, you know, it gives it gives me nervousness. You know, it's like a, a clean table is a is a clean case is a happy case is a happy lawyer. And, and, and on that same note, when I was a baby lawyer, I got some good advice. I know it sounds like 100 years ago now, but I've been doing this for 33 years. But I very early on, uh, my the first law firm I worked at, one of the partners said to me, BJ, the minute you get in the car and you leave your house, you are on trial. Or at the least within one mile of the courthouse. Because he had a horrific story. He was running late. The parking lot was almost full. He pulled in and probably should not have let, should have let the other car park, ran into the courthouse, got in there just in time. Who was the potential juror? The guy he had cut off. Of the yeah. You know, so I really am, I have always been every time you go somewhere or do somewhere as, as counsel. I mean, I don't care what you think about me you know, day to day, but what you think about my client and if I am, if you are giving me money or I am court appointed to represent you, then my fealty is to you, the client. So that means being professional throughout, which is why all these little things that judges laugh some of it off, but they're getting tired of it. And I, I think it was the example of this particular judge after we had our chat he literally wrote me a long email about all these things that were bothering him that that says a lot and i don't think it's the only judge um who does that so you are on trial <laughs> or you are in a hearing or you are being judged from the minute this is turned on makes makes such sense and i know i'm sure you know you talk to enough lawyers everybody has a maybe not as bad as cutting them off but the didn't hold the elevator door or, you know, was, uh, was running too quickly and, and didn't give somebody directions. And the next thing you know, I mean, it just, it, yeah, it's such a great or, or point. Yelling at someone in the courthouse, you know, yelling at what their secretary because they didn't bring them something, you know, or, or it wasn't right. Um, 
and the jurors are walking past to the elevator. I mean, over the years, you see all those things of, and you know that lawyer um, who just holds it together during the hearing and then just is not so nice to their staff, which that's stupid anyway. That's a whole nother thing. You can do a podcast of, you know, who are right. going to treat you? The people who make you the most important people who support you and make you be able to do your job and you treat them like, you know what? Not good. In no. other words, be a good person. Right. Just be a great lawyer. Just pretend you're always on that Zoom hearing or always, you know, about ready for your jur- for your trial to start. And then, you know, it'll become second nature. So I'm, exactly. I'm right there with you on that. Exactly. And it doesn't mean you're not tough. I mean, I have my moments. We all have our moments. I know I seem like a lovely person now, but, you know, if I'm cross-examining you and it's a really intense um, moment, I have no problem with, you know, go- but that that's the appropriate way um, to do it. Well, I also think it's like if the judge knows you to normally be like a four to a six and now during this cross or this closing, you're like an eight or a nine. I feel like the judge gives you extra oomph. Like they're like, oh, my God, you know, I, I BJ really cares about this or, you know, I have never I've never seen this attorney, you know, be this involved. Like this must be so serious as opposed to those attorneys that just always, you know, try to be on 11 no matter what it is. And then you don't know if anything's actually important or not. That that's another good one, and and if you think about that in terms of online, that becomes even more important because the lack of of inflection, a change of your voice, or how you know the the earnestness in, in which you're speaking to to, to um, needs to come through. So as we're getting towards the end here, you know, any other quick tips and things to keep in mind um, to be the most persuasive we can doing, be oh mastering did I, if i mentioned I, I mentioned mastering the mute button that's a big deal yep. um what you wear hold on i am now doing what i said but you know what in real this is real the real world you know you do have paper with you you can look at it every now and then um just make if you know you've got some issues with family or dogs or children Go ahead prior to court and let the like the judge's assistant know, like, I've got this set up the best I can, but I'm a single mother and I have three kids and um, something, whatever. Or um, with the dogs, I've, I've overall actually now let the dogs in during a hearing and I'll leave it. But I say in advance, you know, I think they're going to be quiet. Um, but you may see a little tail walking behind me back and forth. And that is. A little warning goes a long way, um, you know, unless, and, and then other times I've known I've had a court or situation that is so in, intense that is, you know, a two or three day um, deposition or a hearing or, or these long ones that you do need to make arrangements, you know, board your animal, um, try to have a babysitter if you can, but it's not all possible. So if it's not possible, give them a heads up that, that, that you're, you're, you're having that issue. And I, I got to give you a shout out because you totally walked the walk on that one. So we this is this is actually our rescheduled chat because either I was sick or my kid was sick or something along those lines. And, and the way that you handled that is exactly what you just told people and how to do, you know, when it comes up in that respect. So I, I, I love that. Appreciate it. And, and, you know, the thing is this, we don't know at any moment where I don't think there's any of us, no matter what you feel about all this, that uh, I know in Georgia, we've had judges die. Um, we have had, um, I have a, well, I, my podcast has been on hold, but one of my, um, one of my guests on my podcast was, well, it, he, it didn't actually get to air because there was going to be a judicial election in Georgia. And I had all the Georgia Supreme court candidates and court of appeals candidates, um, ready to go. And then something happened politically and, um, he just appointed. So there was no election. But I was ah. holding all these interviews and I had this um, judge's last, you know, a really uh, revealing interview of who he was. And he was one of the first judges to die in Georgia from COVID. And uh, it really hit me hard that I know everybody has different ideas about this, but um, be gentle with those you're online with because you don't know what they're struggling with. The mental health issues, I have seen some lawyers that I know um, that I've even reached out to, like, are you really okay? Like, something seems different for you. Um, 
can we get you some help? So um, I know we're all trying hard to get it done and, but show some grace and the realities of this didn't just happen because we all decided this is how we wanted to work. Right. No. And, and I, you know, that's one of those things where obviously what's going on is terrible, but I'm like sort of thankful that it happened now instead of like 20 years ago, you know, like what would we have done? We'd be on a a conference call or like an AOL chat room. There would just be really no way to get somewhat close to the experience. Whereas now, I mean, it's, it's not ideal, but it's a lot closer than it would have been, you know, 10, 15 years ago. And I will say in some ways, I would like some of this to continue. Um, you know, when you have these cattle calls in the criminal world where a hundred people are showing up to court and it's just a cattle call and your lawyer's just saying, we're ready, we're not ready. You know, you can do it this way. Um, and, and everybody gets a lot more work done and, and, and more efficiently. Yeah. Especially, I mean, you know, we got a lot, at least the Florida bar and I, I won't speak for the other bars always tries to push that, you know, accessibility to lawyers and, you know, ease of access. And then I'm in the same boat as you with the criminal cattle calls. Like if you can save the attorney a 45 minute drive for a three minute hearing and let them go in virtually, you know, that's an hour and a half that they could not charge a client for, or, you know, spend more time on cases or get those callbacks done faster. I mean, it's just, it's there, there's a lot of things that should be taken from this that hopefully we keep some of the positives. And just be aware with um, your client meetings, because I am doing a lot of client meetings online, that your recording is probably off, especially for first-time meetings with clients. And here you go, my friends downstairs. Yeah. Um, Something's going on downstairs. But um, you really want to be careful about what's being recorded and not recorded. Um, If you're having an attorney-client confidential uh, conversation and you've recorded it here and you didn't realize it and you got hacked, that's not good. So um, think about that. But the flip side of it is having an in-person five-minute conversation with an irate client or a, a, an anxious client, you can solve a lot of problems better than just that little phone call or an email saying, just checking on you, is everything okay? Makes total sense. All right. So as we get towards the end of this, um, our next show will be on Thursday, 1.30 Eastern time with Angela Hahn. Uh, and she will be joining us to talk to us about, I don't know, I can't pull up my notes on the iPad. Breezy, you have the topic for Thursday? Ah, love it. Creating your dream life as a lawyer. Dead on. Something that I, I strongly push for. The uh, attorneys to have a much better life than we allow ourselves in a lot of different experiences. So with that, before I let you go, BJ, what is... You know, we're here on exhibit A, with exhibit A attorneys, and we talk about what it takes to be the exhibit A of a successful attorney. So if somebody's listened to this for the last 50 minutes, takes nothing away except this one thing, what's that biggest piece of advice you have to make attorneys into successful attorneys? Everything I said puts client first. Not what you want, not what you prefer, but what works for them. And, and I know we get these systems and we say it makes us more efficient and then it, you know, your client has to fit in that hole and be able to use that technology. If they can't do it for whatever reason, they're too old, what, they don't have access to it. You be the one who bends to meet their needs. It's not the other way around. I love it. Yeah. I, I, you know, I think it's, I think oftentimes as attorneys, we lose sight of like most of the time clients are coming to us in their biggest time of need, whether it's civil or criminal, you know, for the most part, you don't have clients that are constantly interacting with attorneys for certainly not for positive reasons. And so I just, I love that. I love that insight. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. And Billy and Jojo say thank you for being patient with them. (laughs) Yeah. Hey, they're welcome on. We, uh, we support people. We support animals uh, just as much as people. Thanks for thanks for having me and good luck to everybody and I hope that uh, there's some tips and if y'all need to reach me BJ at BernsteinFirm.com any of your viewers who have any further questions or you just want to hop on Zoom and say BJ can you take a look at my room and rate my Skype room or your uh, your your courtroom I'm happy to do it. 
Fantastic. Yeah, we have your uh, we've got your Facebook, your LinkedIn, and your Instagram here as well. So we'll have the uh, the and the website. Wonderful. <laughs> Thank you so much. Go go play with those doggos. They're yeah, they miss you. Bye bye. Thank you for listening to this episode of Exhibit A Attorneys. If you're interested in becoming the Exhibit A of successful attorney, please check us out at LegalEaseMarketing.com, E-A-S-E. 